Cause all of me loves all of you Love y'all What's up my restored beauties? Welcome back to my channel. Today is March 22nd and it is the second day, third day of spring in New York where I am. We had a two day snowstorm. A nice way to enter spring. As you can tell by the title, today we're going to talk about a um, interesting topic. Very touchy. A topic that not many people like to touch. This video is in honor of Women's International International Women's Month, which is March. Like I said in my previous video, I will be dedicating most of my videos throughout this month um, to women. Katus lights at IKEA. Have you ever wondered why women compete with each other? I'm sure you have, and so do I. All of us women have competed with each other in, in, in some type of shape or form, um, whether we want to admit it or not. We're good at hiding it and not confessing. It, it's natural and it happens in every area of our lives. You're working or you're stay-at-home mom, um, whether you're a teacher, um, business owner, entrepreneur, singer, fashion designer, in whatever area, um, it is very natural for us women to compete with, with each other. You don't hear men much competing, you know? I mean, they, men do compete, but they do it in a different way. They do it more as a team. I'm going to share a story um, that happened to me while I was working, which is four years ago, uh, four and a half years ago now, almost five, I used to teach at, at this preschool in the city, in New York City. I taught one to two year olds. I had an assistant. Um, her job was to do diapers, maintain the class clean, um, help me put uh, food for the kids, help me with crafts, you know, help me whatever I needed, basically. So the school, this school, had mainly female teachers. I think from three months till pre-K, I believe that's what it is, pre-K kindergarten. I forget now, I haven't been there in years. But anyway, um, most of the teachers there were female. So, mm -hmm. and when I went there, I, um, I came from Europe and back home. Um, I came here in 2010, so back home I, I worked for this uh, organization and I was, um, I was basically a leader and I had six people under me. Um, and my, my, work, my work ethics were completely different. I had never worked in a school setting. Well, I have, but it was a different, but when Europe is a little bit different than here. So, um, let's just say the setting, the, the, the difference was that here we're all, they were all female and back home where I worked, it was a mix, you know, both genders. So, you know, you learn to have a balance and in this, in this area. When I went to this preschool, I started working and I saw that they were mostly females. Um, some were younger, mostly they were younger and there were a few maybe around my age. Um, I wanted to be friends and I, I wanted to be not like best friends, but I wanted to become friends with them simply because I was like, we're there from 7.30 till 5.00. You know, we were dealing with kids. We were dealing with the same issues. Um, so in my mind, we're like, you know, yes, you know, it's good because they're all females. I'm not gonna feel as uncomfortable. I'm gonna feel okay in my skin. I, I get to wear whatever I want. Technically, not really like, you know, you know what I mean? Like, you know, like it's not gonna be, I'm not gonna be scared that another woman there is gonna hit on me or um, when you're around women you have this mentality that you should be feeling comfortable and, and talking whatever um, you want without being judged 
and I wanted to have a healthy relationship with these teachers simply because we were all doing the same thing. You know, only difference was that some some of the teachers there had kids that were older. Besides teaching the children in the classroom, my duties as a teacher were also to maintain the classroom board. So we had about three inside the class, and then there was one in in the there was one next to um, my my classroom door. So every class, every the hallways in the in the, in the school, they each had a, a board, a bulletin board next to their door. So every week we alternated. You know, let's say the classroom across my class, they had their um, it was their turn to decorate it, and then next week it was my turn. And it, it was usually done according to the theme that we were teaching, according to the holiday. You know, let's say if it was Christmas, you decorated your board or, um, with Christmas um, stuff. Like you know, you had kids do crafts, activities, so you use that and you put it on the board. This is where the competition starts. I didn't know that that was a competition. Uh, I'm a very competitive person and I admit it but the way the way I compete usually um, let's say if, if we're playing basketball or basketball or soccer or games like that board games yes I do like to compete I don't care who you know what gender you are I will compete but in a work air force in 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 uh, in the work area in that category it's kind of different you know especially if you are a teacher and you're all doing the same thing um your competition should be different you know so in this school there were a bunch of teachers um several of them who always came especially this one i won't say her name if she ever sees this i really don't care um because I'm not saying anything bad. I was pretending like she was my best friend. Um, always got information on what, what I was teaching my children. Although her kids were, a lot of my kids, when my kids graduated, moved to her class. So she always came, she, she always drove information from me, asked me what I was doing, I always shared, I didn't care. You know, I had my own way of teaching, I had my own way of doing, you know, music, I had my own way of delivering uh, the lessons to the kids uh, and I, 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 um, I'm proud of that you know and I didn't really see it as a comp competition like in the sense that I didn't really care I didn't really care if I had to share with somebody I, that information because in my mind I'm just like it's for kids you know we're all we're all uh, doing the same thing because we're trying to influence these kids so what's the you know what's the what's the big deal and my competition in, in when it comes to work here yeah usually I always have this mentality that um what you know whatever like whether I'm working for somebody or whether I'm working for myself um I'm competing with myself and I'm fighting and to be a better person than I was yesterday. So the person, the me that was yesterday, that's who I'm competing with, you know, to 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 bring something better than what I was yesterday. I want to be better than today than I was yesterday. I hate copycats. For hours and hours, whether I were I was at work or uh, when I would get home back from work, um, I would get on the computer and I would spend my time on Pinterest, on on. Um, YouTube mostly on Google, you know, looking for activities to do. Let's say it was Christmas or Halloween or whatever theme of that month it was. I would spend hours after going from work, after going home from work, and in, in looking ways. You know, even if I saw something on the internet from another teacher, I always twisted that idea and I made it my own. Like I, I was like, I'm, I like it. But I could do something different, you know, like I don't want to do the exact same thing, you know, I could use that idea, but I want to make it my own, like I want, and, and when you're a teacher, especially if you're working with the little ones, you know, you want, you want to have your own signature, but 
always have to keep in mind that you're influencing these kids and you want their touch too like you want to tell them look like you did this you know like you painted this even if it's a scribble if, even if it's a, a sloppy paint you know you they need to know that they did that not you you know because we can all copy you know and pretend like we did it and put it in the board and make it look all nice but whose work is it you know <laughs> is it you your work or is it the child's you know so every time i would search the web i was you know i found ideas and i would look for ideas that were different and i always had a backup idea like i wouldn't just have one um so I always did something crazy and different, you know, with my class. So this teacher would always come and she asked me um, for my ideas and I would give her. Um, and then the next time I go to around, you know, when I, if I was walking around her class, outside her, her board was with my ideas. <laughs> like her board was full of my ideas. She had taken my ideas and she had done exactly what she heard me say that I was going to do with my board she did that before I even started working on mine and I was just like it, it took me a while to like realize it first I was like so I, I would tell my husband and he's like well don't think it's don't take it personal you know she wants to be you you know she likes what you're doing and I'm like yeah but she's basically the way she's going around stealing my ideas you know it's like why why can't you just come and say you know I would like I would love to work together you know what can we do you know like you do this I do that you know we can share ideas I don't mind that but the way you come in a conniving way um, that's wrong that's really wrong because you are limiting yourself from knowing who you are your potential you know instead of just copy carbon copy me or my work you're limiting yourself like you know or, or let's say somebody else, not me. Um, so when I realized this, I was just like, okay, I would get, I would at, then use my backup plan, backup ideas, and, and and try to incorporate more like create more creativity, you know, and um, still do it different, and it, and it would kill her. <laughs> she hated it. Basically, she did not like it. Um, I found it amusing. But at the same time sad because i felt sad for her you know it's just like why do you have to be me why why can't you do the effort of doing your own research and incorporating your ideas and your creativity and trying to innovate and trying to build something from your own self why do you have to copy somebody else you know it's nothing wrong seeing an idea from somebody um and then doing it as long as you credit that person um but why copy the whole thing why can't you just um merge your own creativity your own ideas and and then give birth to something beautiful something much better than that person probably did because we all have creativity in our head we all are smart we're, we're all talented until we know that we have it, you know, but some people are just lazy. They don't want to do the work. They rather copy somebody else Basically, so I don't know if you probably heard me say this a lot. Um, this I love this quote quote um, First they copy first they hate then they copy exactly what you do. It's sad because us women we can be So powerful together. What's my point in this whole video? What I'm trying to say it's okay to copy somebody's idea, somebody's innovation, innovation. There's no need to go in a nasty way about it, you know? We can all use each other's ideas, each other's creativity, and incorporate them in our life and work. But don't belittle someone, use them just so you get what you want. It just says a lot about you. We're all talented and we're all uh, smart and, and we can bring something that will benefit um, our, will benefit us and the workplace where we work, you know. We can all bring something different to the table. You know? You're a teacher, you're working with the kids, you know. Um, bring your own signature. And But you, first of all, when you enter working in, in, in a school and setting, school environment, um, 
if there's a chance for you to move up the scale, let's say in your position, um, so be it, you know, it's fine, do it without stepping on others. But the, the kids that you're working with, think with this mentality, you are influencing them. They are with you eight hours, sometimes more. You're practically being the mother and the father that they are away from and their parents left those kids with you so you can educate them. This goes for every area in your life, not just for teachers, you know, whatever workforce you are working. Think of uh, working if it's possible, let's say, you know, in the workplace and you're, there's other workers around you. Think um, working as a team, like have that mentality, you know, here, working as a team to something what, what, what do you have that's going to bring, that's going to be beneficial for that company, for that organization, that's going to benefit that company to move up, you know? Not just yourself. Don't think selfishly and don't just get into that job and think that, you know, I'm going to, um, I'm going to, you know, go full force and, and get a promotion, get better. Who cares who I have to step on? Um, I don't care about the company, I don't care whether they lose business or this and that. No, because you won't last long there. When you have a mentality like that, even when you are able to have your own business, you're not going to make it, you know? Because if you don't learn to be a follower in life, it's hard to be a leader. So for us women, we have an advantage, you know? because an advantage is that we feel comfortable with each other and I know some women um, may not but I believe the reason why women compete with each other is because they're not confident in their own skin they're not confident in their own abilities creativity their own uh, strength their own um, talents their own power no need to compete or be somebody else you know when you have when you learn that you have the, when you learn the potential within you you are not going to be um worried about competing with another woman because you're afraid she's challenging you uh, you're afraid that she um does the same thing no nobody has your fingerprints everybody is gifted at something a lot of people are gifted at the same thing but we all have something that somebody else doesn't, you know, so you work on that, you work your own gifts, your own talents, your own abilities, um, work on yourself. When you're confident in what you have to bring to the table, you're not going to be, uh, you're not going to have time to compete with somebody else. And nobody's going to challenge you, you know, nobody is going to challenge you because of who you are it's not going to be a challenge to you because you are confident in your own skin and it's not going to bother you whether um, somebody comes around you and shows hatred and they like your body, they like your work position, they like your husband, your house, your money, um, that's not going to bother you, you know, as much. It's not going to be a, it may bother you, but it's not going to be like something you're going to sit down and cry about it, you know, because you know who you are. You're strong, you're a strong woman, you're smart, you're capable, you have potential, you're, you're full of talents, you know what you can bring to the table, so, you know, if, when you see another woman, you're going to see um, not competition, you're going to see strength, you're going to see somebody you can encourage, build, you know, you're going to see teamwork, you know, not oh, now I got to deal with her, oh, now I got to deal with her in my life, in my life. Whatever type of work you may be doing in your life, think of it this way. Why are you there? Who are you trying to influ influence? What do you want to achieve by being there? Think about giving and sharing. Because when we women share our creativity and are confident in our ability, then we won't think of competing to show off who we are. Because who we are comes naturally. Instead, think of what you can bring to the table that will complete the puzzle in the area you're working. Competing with women, competing other women, it's a sad uh, reality, but you don't, even, you don't have to be part of it. You can be somebody who is going to encourage and, and uplift 
and influence other women for good, you know? A friend of yours, it's woman, has a business and they need some help. Don't be a pity, don't be greedy, you know, extend your help, extend your hand and help that person because that's, you know, you, you never know one day you're going to need that back and you're one day you're going to um, be in the same position and you're going to want another woman to help you. So think of it that way because we, um, we're living in a men's world, you know, it's hard to say, but most um, strong, how to say, strong, the most powerful positions in the world are taken by men. We women spend time, you know, bickering and fighting and competing with each other. We won't, we won't make it anywhere in life, you know. Um, there are many countries in the world who, whose presidents or their leaders are women. And how did they make it up there? I don't think they made it up there by wasting their time competing with other women. No, they made it up there doing what they had to do what they had to do to develop themselves to get themselves up there knowing that they are surrounded by strong men probably um, that will definitely um, try to put them down you know because men already look at us with that mentality that you know we're women we're weak you know but it's not true you know they may be physically some you know well most they may be physically uh, stronger than us, but mentally and uh, creativity-wise and ability-wise, they're not. We're all equal. And think of it that way, you know, when you are working around other women, whatever work that you may be doing. Think of it that, you know, let's help build each other. Let's help um, strengthen each other and, and, and achieving the dreams and the goals that we have and, and if somebody gets there before you that's fine you know if you influence somebody um, that person will come back and pick you up as well so think of it that way um, I'm going to cut it here I know it's pretty long but I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did um, putting this together um, I hope you enjoyed my story as well I learned a lot from that story we're all restored beauties in life. The beauty that God restored in my life through that experience is that I learned who I am. I learned my my strengths and my potential and and that if I keep myself if I know myself and I'm confident in myself, um, others who want to compete with me they're not going to be my competition. See it this way, you know, as a blessing to bring my ab abilities and my um, creativity to the table to help somebody else, you know. Meanwhile, God helps me reach my dreams, you know. So think about it that way as a teamwork, you know, helping each other, strengthening each other, empowering each other instead of tearing down each other instead of competing with each other because you don't go anywhere you know because in a competition there's always a loser and there's always a winner you know when you work as a team the whole team wins not just one from the team the whole team wins if you enjoyed this video consider sharing give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you haven't and I hope to um, see you guys soon be blessed enjoy your day bye